you're too old to become a project manager. Think again. I'm about to re reveal some game-changing strategies that will help transform your career no matter your age. But first, you have to ask yourself, what if your years of experience are actually your secret weapon in project management? How would your life change if you could leverage your wisdom to lead high-impact projects? I'll show you exactly how to break into project management and turn your age into your biggest asset. Final question. What's holding you back from pursuing project management? Do you mind if I share a story with you? I was at a restaurant, one of my favorite restaurants that I love to go to. And the I irony of it all is I don't really eat meat except once a year, like steak and chicken and things of that nature. Basically, I'm a ve vegetarian. And I'm at the restaurant and the general manager, because she got used to seeing me, she said, she walked by, she said, oh, you're back again. And I was like, oh, yeah, I just see you coming in. I was looking for you earlier. And we just started talking. And I said, so how long have you been here? She's telling me how long she's been there. And I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden we pivot into the conversation about she really doesn't, she really wanted to be in news, like a, like a newscaster or something of that nature. And I asked her, and I asked her, I said, so why didn't you continue to pursue that career? And she said, well, I got up in age and I just really just felt like I just missed out on that dream opportunity. And I said, who told you that? Who told you that you missed out on that opportunity? And I continued to pepper her with so many questions to the point she just finally said, you know what? I told myself that there was nothing external that told me that I couldn't be who I wanted to be. There was nothing external that was stopping me. It was all internal. Family, a lot of times in life, we start thinking that we can't achieve or we can't become certain things. Wait a minute, because I know I have my people out there that's going to hate on me and say, hey, I, I, I want to be a basketball player or I, I, I want to be a politician. And you know where I'm going with this family. The point I'm trying to make is if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to be committed and not interested, if you're willing to step up and learn the craft, you have a better shot than if you don't do anything. See, I love, I was watching this interview with Alex Hermosi and it was near the end of the interview. This is poetic to me. I hope it po is poetic to you. During the interview, the last part of the interview, the interviewer asked Alex says, hey, a lot of people want to get into making content, but they feel that they've missed the boat. They feel that it's too late for them to actually start making uh, content. And I love this was so profound. I'm going to break it down and unpack it for you fast in a hurry. Alex, he asked Alex, so do you think it's too late for people that are over 50, over 60, over 40, over 30, whatever that number is? And Alex turned and looked at the interviewer and he said, they might as well give up now. They might as well not even try it. And he paused and the interviewer looked off. What? Like that was weird, you know, at first, because I, I even when I was watching, I was like, wow, that's interesting. Like he just said that. And then he clarified himself. And it was so it was so profound. It made me say, you know what? This is why every time I step in front of this camera, every time that I get to put together a treatment for you guys to deliver a episode. I stand on the aspect of it's never too late to go after your dream. It's never too late to actually do the work and be committed to the work. Because as Alex said, what's the alternative? If you don't do it, you're still going to be in the same position you are. But if you do it, at least you have an opportunity to see if this is something you want to be committed to. Those were my words, not his. So the point is today, we're going to jump into these eight, eight points. And I hope you enjoy this particular framework that I delivered to you, but I have another question for you. Really not a question, it's more of a quote. I love that Chinese proverb. They say, the Chinese proverb goes a little bit like this. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Do you know what the second best time was? Today. So today, family, we're gonna eliminate all excuses. Today, family, we're gonna make you make a decision if you wanna be committed to this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. Point number one. You need to embrace your age as an advantage. Your life and work experience can contribute to better decision making and stakeholder management in project settings. One of the key aspects of when you get into this thing called project management, you have to deal with stakeholders. You have to deal with your project team. 
And if you do not have the patience, if you do not have the fortitude to deal with conflict, majority of the time, I've watched it where project managers who's not used to this type of environment where because sometimes it can be hostile. Sometimes it can be so direct. You'll be like, I can't believe you just said that. And you have to have the ability to step in and break that up and, and find ways to create a healthy conflict instead of a unhealthy conflict. I like that. Let me unpack that. Reason why I say an unhealthy conflict is because when you have a unhealthy conflict, there is when you, there's no direction, there's no directive, you're just venting to vent without eventually letting it out. And then here we go, transitioning into a healthy, then saying, okay, how do we solve this? If you paid attention to me long enough, one of the things that I get frustrated about, and I've been guilty of it, that you can focus so much on the problem that by the time you get to the solution, you're exhausted, you're wore down because you spent too much time focusing on the wrong thing. Once you identified the problem, this is the problem. Now we go over and spend all of our time on the solution. So here's an actionable uh, tip. Prepare three specific, and I do mean specific examples of how your work experience has helped you handle complex situations or may, had to make difficult situations. Because as a project manager, you are the coach. As the project manager, you are the professor. As the project manager, you are the one that is leading the charge and you may have to be, well, not may, you will come up ac across difficult conversations and you need to be able to make a decision, not a choice. There's a difference. A lot of people like to make choices, but when you make a decision, you have to be able to be willing to stand on that decision. If it's time to pivot, you know that it's time to pivot. Let's move on to point number two, network strategically. Build a professional network. Get on LinkedIn. Hire a mentor and a coach. I know y'all get tired of me saying that. Hire a mentor and, and coach that can help you, guide you through this process. A lot of times we don't want to invest in hiring a coach or mentor. Here comes my rant. A coach or a mentor because we feel that I don't want to pay of a mentor or coach to say, hey, I, I'll mentor you for a thousand dollars. And you're like, oh, that's too much. But let me ask you a question. What of that investment? could really help you land your next uh, particular job that you were looking for? What if that investment can help you land that contract role that you were looking for? Do you think that investment would be worth it? Do you think it would pay for itself if you have a coach or a mentor that has more than a decade of experience guide you through how to navigate the politics, how to navigate in leading a project, how to navigate, you get where I'm going. Here's an actionable tip, because every day, all of this today is so actionable because I got a special request from one of the family members. And so we're gonna make this action pack so that individual or individuals that's in this boat can actually do something with the information. I just don't want you to sit here and just listen and don't take notes. I don't want you, I want you to play this back as many times as you need to get this down because it's not too late. Here's an actionable tip. Identify and join at least one project management associate or a group in your area. I gave you example, getting on LinkedIn, join, get on, join PMI, attend at least one event per month, please and aim to make three new connections at each event. Let's move on to point number three. You wanna be open to contract or even temporary positions. I, I worked a lot of temporary roles where it would be a six month contract or even a three month contract. Most of the time it's normally six or 12 months. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted more exposure. I wanted exposure to the faucets, the different faucets of business and understanding how to navigate because when you come in as the the new resource you get the new resource hazing as i say what do you mean by that ed i'm so glad that you asked what it means is that is that they it's a lot of things they don't share with you up front until you earn their trust so you have to learn how to earn people's trust faster than you normally would when if you were on a full time working a full time role. So you have to find ways, like I always recommend, setting up one on ones with your project team and stakeholders to really build a real connection with them. So again, look at that. One of the things I would recommend as an actionable item is set up job alerts for contract and temporary work around project management positions on like Indeed or Monster or even LinkedIn and apply at you should be applying every day to those type of, if you get an alert, I don't care what the job description says. I don't care. 
a, uh, just apply because the only thing that can happen is they say no. My mama would always say a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So let's move on to point number four. Tailor your resume. When you're applying to those jobs, you want to make sure that your resume is tailored. Look at a variety of project management jobs. See how your experience can align with what they're looking for and make that the standard. When you make that the standard, you're going to continue to adjust or continue to tailor your resume so you can get those hits from those recruiters or those hiring manager. Your resume needs to highlight project management potential. Even if you've never held a PM role, you need to talk about leadership. You need to talk about uh, negotiation. You need to talk about dealing with stakeholders. These are all what they call soft skills. So rewrite your resume, focus on project related achievements, use action, said action, use action verbs and coordinate it with lead, implement it and quantify those resort results where possible. Let's move on to point number five. I mentioned this before in point number four, highlight your soft skills are like communication, leadership. One of the biggest things is problem solving are definitely crucial to this thing called project management. And often your communication, your leadership and your problem solving definitely improves with age as well as an experience. If you're a younger uh, project manager, you have to get reps in, as we say, sets of reps. And you do that by getting more exposure to different projects. Um, here's an actionable step. For each key soft skill, prepare a specific example of how you successfully applied, how it was successfully applied in a professional setting. A good framework is to use a star situation, task, action, result. Again, star, situation, action, excuse me, situation, task, action, and result. Let's move on to point number six. Create your personal brand. One of the ways I, I believe you could create a personal brand is start a YouTube channel. You don't want to be on camera, start a podcast. You don't want to, you don't want to have your voice, start a blog. Start writing on LinkedIn. I'm, tell, I'm not telling you things that I think of that sounds good and cool. These are things that I do. I have a link. I have, I put out LinkedIn articles Monday through Friday. I have a, a YouTube channel. I have a podcast. All of these things are creating a personal brand. All of these things are really wanting to give back value. I want to be one of the best out there to give so much value that when I have a product or a service, you're going to say, this is a no brainer. If his free stuff is this good, I can imagine what the paid stuff is going to be. So again, family, look at starting a blog. If you like to write, if you like being on, on camera, do YouTube. If you like, if you don't like being on camera, do a podcast. These things are going to help you understand project management more. When I started this back in March of last year, my project management skill set has really improved. It is as James Clear says, try to get 1% better. By doing this, this is helping me get 1% better each and every day. Point number seven, offer pro bono service. What is pro bono service? Pro bono will work, will allow you to gain real world project management experience with helping others. So reach out to your local small business or nonprofit and offer to manage a project for them free of charge and aim to complete at least one pro bono project within six months. Because what this does is now you get to put this on your resume. Now you also have a reference and they're going to say when they call that reference. So yeah, I see that this individual done some project management. Could you tell me a little bit about how they led the project? Tell me about their leadership skills. Tell me about their communication skills. All of the things we talked about earlier, as far as these soft skills, let's move on to point number eight, address age related concerns proactively. Don't wait. Address them head on and don't make it seem like we're trying to hide from anything. Tell them what it is and then let them make the decision where they want to go. I got a story for that as well. Don't judge me though. One of my favorite shows, I'm only on season five, is called The Good Wife. The reason why I love The Good Wife, if you ever watch this so Alicia Florick, she was away from practicing law for I think it was like 12 years because she was ra raising her kid. She decides to get back into the job market. She goes for interviews. So she thinks she gets this opportunity, goes into, she thinks the opportunity is hers. So she's excited. She goes and get a new place and all of these things and then comes back and finds out it's a paralegal role. She was like, no, I really wanted to be a lawyer. 
long story long, basically what ended up happening is she ended up, someone ended up taking a chance on her as a lawyer, and then she just flourished and took off from there. So again, some employers may have concerns about hiring older, older career changers. So it's important, again, like I said, to address it head on. Here's an actionable tip. Prepare a brief elevator pitch here. If you ever been, if you're new to this episode, anytime I say this word message, this is something you want to lock down. I don't care what you're doing. Press pause and go get you a sticky note or go get to take your phone and write this down. You want to develop an elevator pitch that highlights your energy, your adaptability and your commitment to long term growth and project management. Practice this pitch until you can deliver it confidently, naturally and with poise as you're delivering it. Let me give you two bonuses and then I promise you I'll be out your way after my closing remarks. Point number, my first bonus, consider a lateral move. Roles like a project coordinator, project support can serve you as a stepping stone to a full project management position. Here's an actionable tip. Identify project roles in your current organization or industry and schedule, schedule informational interviews with these people in these roles to understand the actual career paths and the required skills. Here's my last bonus. Take online courses. Online courses are flexible, affordable way for you to actually build the actual theory, which is the knowledge of project management. And here's the actionable tip. Enroll in project management fundamental courses like Corsica or Udemy. And by the way, I actually, I'm actually working currently as we speak on a project management fundamental course to help new project manage, basically anyone that's looking to get in this industry called project management to help you with the terminology. I have a lot of uh, episodes throughout, throughout the channel here. However, I wanna put all of that together for you and really, really just over deliver on that. So I'm taking my time, I'm not in any rush, but that is something that I really believe is going to be a benefit to a lot of people out there. Here are my three closing remarks. First, first point, embrace age as an advantage. Like I stated before, your life and your work experience can contribute to better decision-making and stakeholder management in a project uh, setting. Point number two, network strategically. You need to start building these professional networks. Like I said, get on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn and start connecting with people and building that relationship, find a mentor or a coach. These are, this can help you get better insight because you may realize, hey, I would like to really get into project management, but then after maybe doing a pro bono project or maybe after talking with a coach and mentor, you may say, ah, I don't know if this is something I really do. Or you may get so excited that this is the thing I have to do and you just need the tool set and skill set to help you get there. And the last and final thing, address age-related concerns proactively. Like I said, some employers may have um, concerns about it, but you need to be able to put together an elevate pitch that you can pr properly articulate what your plans is for a long-term growth there. Family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I go by the name of ED. This to me was, this meant a lot to me because when a family member says, hey, I would really like to learn about, hey, if I'm an older person, how do I get into this thing called project management if I'm interested? And so I want it as I am for the people, I'm for the family. And any time that you put out a request for an episode that, and I know that it makes sense for the bigger family, I want to address it. And even if it's just one or two people, I addressed you because again, in long-term approaches, I want to be able to over deliver so much that you say, wow, I can't believe I'm getting this for free. Until next time, family, I'm out.